Good afternoon and welcome back. It's football time. The NFL draft sports are back. It's the most incredible thing I think I've experienced in the past four weeks. I cannot wait for the NFL draft tonight. It's live virtually, though, which is going to be different and weird. I got my Eagles gear on, of course. Uh, I'm going to throw it to the everybody on screen here right now. We got we got Jeff Lichtenstein. The Bears. Uh, go Bears. We got Craig Hager. He's, he's a Detroit Lions fan. Oh, kind and of a lame man, Lions fan. A man that probably needs no introduction. Big nasty NFL Hall of Famer, New Orleans Saint, Kansas City Chief, Willie Rofe. How's it going, man? Glad to be here. Hey, thanks for joining us, Willie. Hey, we also got to wish him a happy birthday. It was his 50th yeah. birthday the other day. How old? 50? 50 years young. And Craig, uh, the guy that won the Willie Rolf Award for the University of Arkansas, a nice kid, Frank Ragno, who plays lineman for the for the uh, Detroit number 77 in the center. Oh, crap. There we go. Yeah, real good. Got real some good, good talent. talent. Awesome. Really well. So what did, what did you do? I just had a coronavirus birthday. What did, what did you do for yours? Uh, Jeff, we stayed around the house, and then we went where we're building on Hutchinson Island, had some lunch, and, and, and ate out there about 5 o'clock because it was supposed to be raining, but it wasn't raining real bad. And then we went in, in uh, the neighbor's house and, and checked it out. So we sat out there. We went to uh, get some food at Eaton German Restaurant and sat outside and hung out for a few hours and came home. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all gonna have we're all gonna have extra birthdays and all sorts of celebrations once this thing is over. Yes, yes. We so I did for my birthday, I got a Lou Malnati's pizza. Wow. A little Chicago deep dish. So oh nice. Gonna, nice. Yeah, so I'm gonna have some of that. I have a question for you. So because I'm a I'm from Chicago, I'm a big Bears fan. I grew up with the, the 80, 85 Bears and Vitka and all that stuff. Not, not a lot of people realize that team was really built by Jim Finks. You know, when, yeah. uh, when, when George Hallis's son Muggsy died, uh, or before Muggsy actually hired Finks, and he built that team from Walter Payton and drafted some great linemen from, you know, Keith Van Horn, Jimbo Covert, yeah. and a lot of those guys. And um, I was rooting for him to draft you because all those guys, Elgenberg, and, and they all had retired at that point or, or on their last legs. And I was thinking about it last night. Finks um, was, he went over to New Orleans. Did you Finks draft you? Was that his last pick? I was Finks' last first round pick. Right after y'all took Curtis Conway, I went number eight to New Orleans. And I was Finks' last peak pick. Finks uh, smoked a lot of cigarettes back then. <laughs> after the draft, Fink got, Finks got sick and went in the hospital. I never got a chance to meet him. Oh, no. Never, Finks never was got a chance to meet him. Finks built the um, – he built the Minnesota Vikings Purple People Eaters in the 70s oh. with Fran Tarkenton and, and um, I'm trying to remember the lineman who was so great. Um, there was a whole, a whole series of guys. He was amazing. And then he built the Bears one by one and had some of the most incredible drafts. But he was run out of town um, by the McCaskey family at that, at that point, basically. And um, – and then he went to New Orleans, and New Orleans had never been to the playoffs before. And he built this team, and, and built the I was team just in curious. And you, so you were you were his last uh, legacy. I was his last legacy, yeah. and, and he, it seems like he drafted a lot of Hall of Famers. He drafted some real good football players. Yeah, no, he had an he had an amazing eye for talent. Maybe maybe the best of all time if you think about his the length of time. And it was really sudden when he um, when he died. I think he was going to go work for the. Football what work for NFL front office or something in there. Yeah. yeah you, great. Go ahead. Who's your favorite quarter? Who's your favorite quarterback you played for? I would say the best quarterback, the most consistent quarterback I paid for at the end of my career is probably Trent Green. You know, we protected him, but he threw for 4,000 yards four years in a row. Um, early in my career, we picked up Jim Everett. He had a couple of years he threw for 4,000 yards. And then we got Dicker. You know, we, we got Dicker out of retirement in New Orleans right. for three years. So Dicker coached me for three years in New Orleans. How, did I, you, how, how, how was, how was Dicker to play for? Dicker was interesting to play for. You know, Dicker, we got out of retirement, and uh, he coached the team, and he brought a lot of old school guys in. 
Dick Stanfield was my line coach there for a year. Right, he was on the Bears before that. I remember that. He was on the Bears coaching staff. He was a real good guy. But uh, we were a little slow, and the NFL was starting to change. That's when the 99 team came out with the greatest show on turf with Vern Mill and Mike Marks, and it was all speed, speed, speed. So that, the NFL was shifting then toward more ground and pound to more airing it out and speed and spreading people out. Well, you you played for did, did, so you you must have um, you blocked for Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams got drafted in '99. Yes. So Rick, how good was Rick? How, how good was Ricky Williams, or how good could he have been? Ricky Williams could have been great player. Uh, he played better when he got to Miami. I yep. think he was a little immature. And then the problem was when the Saints traded that whole draft for him, which they probably didn't have to do because Edwin and James and him were both available. We traded the whole draft. And then Master P was his agent, and he got the worst contract in the NFL history. Ricky's Master probably he got twenty million guaranteed back then, and he got a terrible deal. And he thought he was going to come in the league and rush for fifteen hundred yards. And, and once he didn't rush for fifteen hundred yards, all the all the guarantees went out of his contract. So he got pissed off after he figured that out. And then after that, it was all downhill. Well, I I know that you know I think Ditka's Ditka's mentality was you know the he. It was looking for the next Walter Payton. Yes. And there was only one Walter Payton. It's so, it, it, it shows so much of it is mindset and how you look at life and how optimistic you are and how hard you work at, at your craft, too. It is. And then you you got to look at it. Ricky came from Texas, and he won the the, dope, the running back award and had all that hype coming out. Walter Payton went to a very small school, Jackson State, and it's unbelievable. On that team, you have three Hall of Famers, Walter Payton, Jackie Slater and Robert Brazil got got in. All those guys played on the same team at Jackson State, so that's incredible. You had three wow. guys going to Hall from that small from a from a small swag school. I learned I was six years old when they drafted Peyton, so I kind of just like grew up with him until he he left in '87. So I guess I was at that point 18 or I, I was in college. But the thing I learned from Peyton was he he used to tra- he used to practice on this hill. And he would run yeah. it for hours in a day, but it taught it really taught me work ethic and, and how hard you work. And he would just bounce up after he was tackled, and he was fun to. You're you're about you're you're younger than me, so you watched him growing up too. I watched I watched him, and and they talk about his workouts and Jerry Rice. They both used to run the hills, and I think Jerry ran some trail outside of San Francisco that was tough, and people would come out there to work out with him. But he's legendary for his off season workouts and Jerry Rice. And I'll say the last time I saw him when I think he was uh, getting near the end because of that liver cancer or whatever, he came yeah. to training camp with Dick in like 99 and was at our practice a couple of times. And that was the last time I got a chance to see him at camp. What, what's your favorite Mike Ditka story? I don't know if and I need you, to tell this You can tell it. It's a coronavirus world. Nobody's going to come get us. Okay. Um, in 1998, we went to play the Bears in Chicago. Dicka had a restaurant in Chicago. Yep. Dicka went that Saturday night to his restaurant, and they hung out and had a good time. We play on Sunday. We win that game. Dicka really couldn't talk on the sideline that Sunday because of, he was been part, hanging out Saturday night. Ah. So that's the favorite thing I remember is what, we won what was the he game. In- but Dicka went out and hung and hang out. In the was there an, was uh, there an incentive for beating the Bears? No, there wasn't. I don't remember being an incentive. I just remember that uh, he wasn't talking a lot on the sideline that next day. So I guess he had a good time that Saturday night. But we ended up winning the game. So, that's that's pretty funny. So, so Willie, I had a quick question for you. So the draft is tonight. Um, yeah. And this changes this changes kids' lives. Uh, you know, that's what yeah. they say. It changes your lives. Just, just talk about your draft experience and, and the whole when, when you know the NFL. Just what, what it's like. What goes through your head when you're, you know, waiting for your name to be called? Well, out? well, I was fortunate. I didn't have to wait a long time. And you know, it's interesting. Me coming from Louisiana Tech. So if you had a recruiting skill at that time, I probably was a one star, two star recruit. Uh, I was undersized, and I went to Louisiana Tech. And we were just going to Division One independent. So. When I was playing in college, if guys got free agent trials, we were excited about them. So when we came along our class, 
uh, we had a, a lot of seniors on our team between the Prop 48s and the red shirts and the and the uh, the JUCO transfer. We played a tough schedule. We had a good game against Alabama. I had a real good football game against guys that went five and six. I remember that game a bunch of scouts being at our practice every week. And um, I just wanted to go do well, stay healthy, go to the to the hula bowl and the shrine game, get ready for the combine. And, uh, you know, I knew I was big and I was fast so I could run. And, you know, I just uh, kept going up the board after the combine and uh, passed Lincoln Kennedy was the man. I think if Lincoln Kennedy had come out his junior year when Washington won the Rose Bowl, he probably would have won the top five. But he came back and he, he got injured and he was a little bigger. He didn't work out at the combine. And I passed him by and I ended up going top 10. So for me, it was amazing to go to New York, to have that experience with my family and friends and to be a top 10 pick. From Louisiana Tech, the, the last first round pick had been in the 70s. Bradshaw went number one in 70. And then Roger Carter, the receiver, went in 74. So it had been like 20 years since somebody went in the first round at my college. What was your 40 time? Four nine five. Get out. Four, nine, eight. And uh, I weighed three oh seven. You big I'm man. I'm faster than you, Willie. Uh oh. Yeah. I'm faster than you. Yeah, you were. Who did you think, you, did you, think you were gonna gonna... go ahead? Who did you think was gonna draft you? I, you know, I thought I was going anywhere between five and ten. I thought Detroit might end up taking me, but they traded uh -huh. Pat Willing got traded to Detroit, and Lorenzo uh -huh. Neal and I got, got drafted for that pick. So I, the eighth pick got traded for Pat Swilling, who was defensive player of the year the year before when they started breaking up the Dome Patrol and breaking up all those guys that, that earned respectability with the Saints then. So I ended up going uh, number eight. But, I, I mean, I had to wait a little while, but I didn't have to wait that long. And we it probably was, picked uh, the receiver that year, didn't we? Yeah, no. yeah. Did we really? What else is new? <laughs> <laughs> so, we pick our receiver every year. So, so Willie, I got I got behind me. I don't know if you can see me here. I got I got you behind me. The big I see you. I see you. I see you. Right there. There, there, there's a, in the Chiefs uniform. My my buddy from back home in Pennsylvania, weird guy. We're all Eagles fans, and he's a Chiefs fan. Grew wow. up a Chiefs fan because he liked Joe Montana. When Joe Montana went to the uh Chiefs, he, he 1993. Yep, the so, John Nat, if you're watching, he's on right now. There's Willie Rofe. He, he, lo he loves you. I uh, loves the Chiefs. But I want to go through a quick couple questions that we have here. Willie, I'm going to put a picture up again behind me. I'm going to switch it uh, if I can find it here quickly. Hold on. Um, we want to give a shout-out to Isaiah Simmons from Kansas City, uh, of Lake the North, that my wife has known since he was a kid. He'll be a top-10 pick tonight, the linebacker. Everybody knows from Clemson. They're yeah. saying he'd be Detroit. They're talking about Detroit for him. Well, they, well, he, well he's going to go. See, now they were saying four. Not, it's a lot of linemen in this draft. So now they're saying Worth might go four. And they got that big kid from uh, Louisville, uh, uh, the yeah. big lineman, six seven three seventy, that ran like a five one, who's moving up. So it's going to be a lot of linemen taking the night. So we'll see where Isaiah goes. But he's a great kid. And he, was, he wasn't a five-star recruit and went to Clemson and and he had a hell of a career. So we're looking forward to him getting going drafted out of night. So that's some of the questions we have for you, Willie. So the guy behind me right now there, Joe Burrow, yeah. he's uh -huh. going one. He's going one, right? He's going so, one. Done deal. He's going to Cincinnati. All right. And then I'm going to pull up another guy right here, as we all know. Tua, where's he going? I think it's going to be a lot of movement tonight. I think you're going to see some people trading up. I think Tua goes uh, Miami. Six, six. Miami. Well, Miami's talking about taking another quarterback. Oh really? He's talking to his injury. Yeah, they are talking about what, him taking. Silver, I think it was. Yeah, Silver. yeah, they are talking about. I, you know, it's gonna be some because uh, I read where uh, Atlanta tried to trade up for in, uh, for Washington's pick because they want uh, Chase Young. I think it's gonna be some movement tonight on the board on the I top. Think Detroit's end. trying to trade away their third pick. I saw that. Um, Who? Detroit. Detroit. They have the third pick. They're trying to trade that down. I heard Miami was a big contender for that one, or the Giants. Yeah, they're trying to trade down so they can get a couple more slots. So, yeah, it's going to be some movement tonight. Yeah. And, then, and then, Willie, you know, you, you were an offensive lineman, of course, Hall of Famer. The guy behind me, this this Wurf guy from yeah. Iowa, he's, yeah. he's just a monster. Like, he's a beast, like athletically so, and just athletic, physically. Physically, I think, I think you have some perennial pro bowlers, Hall of Fame type linemen in this draft. Between him, the kid from, uh, from uh, Georgia, Jones, and uh, the big kid from Louisville and the kid from Alabama, 
you have some real, real solid linemen in this draft. So it could be five of them, four or five going to the top 10. I know it'll be five or six going to the top 15. Wow. Got some good ones. Hey, Will, Willie, do you think, what do you think is going to happen with like training camp and, and, and games in the, uh, for this upcoming season? I think if they find some type of uh, antibodies and get that under control before before the fall, and they they're able to test people at camp because you have to make sure you test all the employees and all the players and stuff over and over again. If they get that in place, I think it, I think they'll be fine with a football season. I think it's going to come down to what they can do with this testing, whether they it stands in the stands or not. It's going to come down to the testing with people coming in and out those stadiums. So. That's going to be the tricky part of it. So sometime I heard it wasn't going to be a season. Now I hear there is going to be a season. You know, I, I don't think the NFL wants to lose this year. So it's going to come down to the testing. If Can they come out with some type of vaccine? I don't know if it's going to be too short. Yeah, you know what's interesting? I just got, I mean, literally 15 minutes ago, I got a text from my doctor asking if I want to do an antibody test. Yes. And so I and I've heard that now from three people in the last uh, in the last couple of days. So it seems like that must be coming along, um, like you said, pretty pretty. At least I think it means that the players will be much safer. Yeah, if you, know, you can play. Antibody, if you can do the antibody test, you'll know if somebody's had it or not. So then you can you know if they've already had it and how long how long ago they had it. So then they're safe to come back out. So I think once they get that out and you, they got a few months to get it going. That uh, I think if they get that all in play, I think we'll be looking at a football season this year. I think they'll be fine by training camp. Be better because I need my fantasy. Uh, yeah, need, I'll lose my well, mind. The problem is with the new players. When are they going to be able to open up the facilities and guys being able to work out? And I think they said that once these states get cleared for stuff to reopen, then they can go back and start practicing and doing other stuff once the states reopen. Well, you know, I think the best you've got all these drafts coming up for. For um, the NBA later on, the NHL here, baseball, everything happens between now and, and June, yeah, and, and, and July, and all the drafts. It, the real, the good general managers are really going to benefit from this because mm -hmm. if you can, if you know how to read film and and you're going to draft better than you're not going to have all these same advantages of talking to people and bringing them in for individual workouts. Well, they said this is kind of like the old way of doing it, where you used to do it in the seventies. You, if your scouts are real good and you know what you're doing, right. you're going to be able to draft well because you didn't get to do all the other stuff. So this is the way they used to do it back in the day before they had all this technology. Stuff. Yeah, well, my, my team my team picked Trubisky over uh, over Mahomes. So. You got Foles yeah. now, though. You got Nick Foles, man. Yeah. Well, it's better. Hey. For me, that's great. That's like we've never had anybody like that. Hey, hey Willie. Yeah. Willie, who, days. Who, do you think, who do you think the Saints are going to grab? Who are they going to draft? Yeah, what any? pick are they? They are... Boy, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I don't think they're going to take a receiver because they got Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, I think they may go uh, either defensive back or they even, they even said they might take a quarterback. I can how, see how many how many years does um, do you think that Breeze has left? One or two. Well, he signed a two year deal. This might be his last year. This might be it. So I think they might draft a quarterback at 24. And, and then your other team that you played for, the Chiefs, you know, they got the last pick, of course, because they won the Super Bowl. I think they have the last pick. They didn't trade anything. Who, yeah. who, do, they, who uh, do they do? Offense, Andy Reid? I don't know. I don't think they, they go off. Offense. I think they go, I think they go back, defensive. Don't they? I think they go uh, running back or they go defensive line. I bet they picked Swift from Georgia. A yeah, a nice they back. need a running. They back, need a so running back, ball. a young running back. Yeah, a young running back would help, or they, or they might, they might draft another lineman. Only so, what would you? Draft. What is what is the best advice you could tell, um, tell a youngster today? You know, for all the youngsters that are listening out there, about uh, you know when you get drafted or or you're playing, what you know, keep your head on straight. What would you, what would you give them for some good advice? I would tell them to, um, especially these guys going high. Talk to the NFL, find you a good financial advisor, not some not a family friend and all this stuff. Find you a reputable financial advisor, get on a budget, get everything lined up. You need to get lined up and uh, make sure you get out to a good start. You don't want to be worried about that and worried about money and getting all this stuff situated. 
get that stuff situated before you sign that contract and then get in there and get in camp on time and concentrate on football and get all this other stuff lined up. And if you need advice, go talk to the NFL. They got plenty of people that can help you to find the right people and, and get on the budget. You got a lot of life to live after you get done playing football. Right, it's a lot of, it's a lot thrown at a young kid. Um, it is. It is. And, and then everybody's trying to probably get on the gravy train. You know, yeah, it, too. it is. Yeah. And we had big news this week, Will. You know it. Uh, Rob Gronkowski traded to the Buccaneers, and now him and Tom Brady are reunited with the Buccaneers. Excited. What do you, what do you think about that? Oh, man, I think it's great. I, I don't – for the Patriots to let both of those guys go, I mean, the way they left, that tells me something, uh, that, that things weren't all gravy, you know, over there with the organization anymore. And – you know, that's two of the best players to ever play in that franchise. I think they are the top two players to play in that franchise. So for them to team up again, it's exciting for the NFC South. It's going to be tough on the Saints in that division. But uh, I think I'll, I think we'll be making a trip up to uh, Tampa Bay to see them play. Heck, yeah, I'm definitely seeing a game, too. Yeah. yeah. And, Willie, what was – you know, what what's the – everyone has that rivalry, right? You, you had that either that team or that player. Who did you just hate playing against? Or who did you – who was that guy that just got under your skin? It it was uh... – oh, We lost you. Hold on. Oh, we just lost him. He'll be right back. Well, there's a cliffhanger. There's a cliffhanger. Who <laughs> who did Willie who did Willie uh, hate to play against? So hold on, let me uh, let me just... London die. Hey Craig, text him quick. He should be all right. He should be back on. I'm hey sure Sam, do you like this? So I guess we got, we got questions out here. Oop, what's that? So we got some questions out there for Willie too. Um, I'm going to have to jump off in a little bit too. Oh, there he is. Y'all got me? You're good. You. So Somebody, somebody's calling. Uh, who is it, a guy that, you, that just Isaiah, got Isaiah, Isaiah, Sim, Isaiah Simmons' mom was just calling the phone. And uh. the phone. <laughs> so we, we sent him a nice gift. But anyway, it was um, – Atlanta Falcons, born in the 49ers. Back then, we were NFC West with the 49ers, but I would say the Atlanta Falcons, the Dirty Birds, because New Orleans and Atlanta are close. They would come in our stadium. They started winning, and they would start ranting all over the place. When we went in their stadium, our fans would take over. So it was, it was, it was the Dirty Birds, the Atlanta Falcons. They went to the Super Bowl in 98. They were real good, and uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was highly contested. But uh, it was it was good back then. A lot of com- competition, and uh, we had a lot of fun with each other. Any one, specific one, one player? Last question. Any specific uh, player? Chuck Smith was one of them. Chuck but I'm Smith. Me, Chuck Smith was a real good player, underrated, and uh, and uh, he would uh, he would bring it every time. And like I said, it was a rivalry game. It was it was like a college rivalry between us and the Falcons. Who, who, um, what quarterback would you have loved to play for? That was that was active back then when I played. Yeah, Marino, uh, Montana. Who, Montana. Who was it? Montana, because I heard how cool Joe Montana was off the. They called him Joe Cool off the field. I think it would have been a lot of fun to play with Montana. I think it would have been a lot of fun to hang out with Montana off the field back then. What? Why is that? I mean, just you know, rep his what people say about him. He was a guy. He was he liked to have fun. <laughs> so NFL draft tonight. Uh, Jeff's pulling for the Bears. I don't know for a receiver. Jeff, we 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 we, we, we draft like a ninety seventh pick or something. We I'm trade ho- everybody away. I'm hoping the Eagles get Carson Wentz a weapon. I need a weapon for Carson Wentz. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully Wentz can stay healthy. Ah, uh, come Lions, on, Willie. The Lions are either going Isaiah Simmons or they're going the cornerback from uh, Ohio. What, unless pick, what, pick, what, pick, what pick are they? So we have three unless we trade down. But what I've heard is they don't want to pick a cornerback at three because there's other options down there. So if we can get – I'm all for Isaiah Simmons. We need to, want to rush the passer. I don't I don't think – I don't. but he's a, he plays safety a lot of the time in linebacker. He plays safety most of the time. I don't think they take him with a third pick. I think Detroit might trade down. Yeah, so I heard they're trying to trade maybe with the Dolphins to five. Yeah, and, trade, and then get another pick. And then you, 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 build, you build some more players. So Right. 
hopefully. But really, I'm uh, uh, that. I, I know you hear Poochie in the background, Craig. <laughs> Poochie or Louie? Hey, Louie and Poochie are both here. So. <laughs> Bears pick 43 and 50. They have two second round picks. Wow. Will there be good for any wide receivers or offensive linemen? That they got are, a lot of receivers. Yes. I think they, they got a lot. It's deep in receiver and, and linemen. So I think you still can get a real good offensive lineman at, at, at one of those picks. Yes. It's a does lot Jimmy of Gra Does Jimmy Graham, they picked up Jimmy Graham. Does he have anything left or is he done? He might have a little left. I, mean, I didn't know they picked him up. I mean, he's the heck of a player in New Orleans. He, He's the only one who benefited from coronavirus. He got nine million dollars. Wow! <laughs> he did. You know, you know, you know. He flies planes. He I didn't know that. Fly. I think he's down here. Yeah, I think he lives down here somewhere. Cool. Yeah. Well, well, really, we want to we want to thank you for coming on today and talking with us. Uh, hey, you know what? Can, can we do one thing? What's that? Yeah. Willie, Sam, put your microphone off too. Let's all sing Willie Happy Birthday. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Happy, birthday Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Willie. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Hey, hey, uh, Willie, thanks again. I appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Y'all have a good day, man. I'll be I'll be reliving those memories 27 years ago tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Long yeah. time. Adios. Hey, see you later. Bye, see you guys. Bye-bye.